Okay, so today in class we're going to do a loft to a horizontal plane and a vertical plane. So we're going to start with going new, and we're going to draw with a part and say okay. Now over here we have a front plane, top plane and right plane. For this drawing I'm going to go to the top plane, so I'm going to right click on the top plane and come over here to this icon which is normal to. You need to become very familiar with these icons, so this one is normal to. Now I'm going to go straight to sketch, and when I go to sketch I'm going to start this one with a circle. So I'm going to get my circle, go to the origin, left click once and drag. Now the problem with circles is there's no points in them when I exit the sketch. So I'm going to get my construction line which is the center line, point to point, point to point. I'm just going to delete that one, I don't need it anymore. As you can see the sketch is blue, I need to make it black, so smart dimension, and I'm just going to put a dimension on that of 80. It's more about the construction here than the measurement. So as you can see we have a circle, now up here I have an uh, exit sketch or delete sketch. I just want to exit the sketch, so I'm just going to click that fella there. And over here it says sketch 1. I'm going to click on that and press F2 and call it base circle sketch. I think it is very important to rename your sketches so it's very easy to identify you what you're looking for. Now next thing I'm going to do is as follows. I just want to right click and edit that sketch. I made that an 80, I need to know that now for a moment. If I look at the right plane, the right plane is going right in the middle of that. I'm going to go Features, Reference Geometry, Plane. Now, I'm going to do a diff distance of uh, 70 mil, just so it's coming out. There's no other reason than why not, and say yes. Now, I'm going to rename this. I'm going to kind of Construction, Plane, A, and it's parallel to the right, so I'm just going to say right. So, Construction, Plane, A, right. And I'm going to look normal to that fella, and I'm going to zoom out, and up here I'm going to draw, and I'm going to do this on purpose, I'm drawing it the wrong way. I want to draw here a square which is rotated at 45 degrees. I'm going to press control on my keyboard, which is the bottom left button, and I'm going to select the origin, I'm going to select two points here, and I'm going to tell the computer I want them vertical, on the same vertical line. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a measurement between here and here, I'm just going to say 90. Next, smart dimension. I want to put an angle on two lines. So I'm going to click the line, click the second line, and I want to make an angle there of 90. Next thing I want to do, I'm going to press escape to get out of smart dimension. I'm going to click this point, press control, bottom left button, and select this point. I'm going to say horizontal. Lovely. Now, next thing we want to do is smart dimension. I'm going to put an angle up here of 90. Lovely. Now, I want to put a smart dimension of distance from this point to this point to be 66. So, there I have a rotated square and a circle. I'm going to exit the sketch up here, and I'm going to rename that um, side rotated or old, square sketch. It doesn't matter what you call the sketches as long as they're identifiable. Now I'm finished with this plane here, so I'm just going to hide that plane. Sorry, hide it, not look normal to it. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go look at the front plane. The front plane is going right in the middle of that sketch, so I'm just going to right click on it and look normal to it. And I'm going to get my spline up here. I'm going to click, click, click. And just on purpose now you'll notice those two points aren't touching. So, I'm going to press control on my keyboard click this point and click this point and here say coincidence I want them to be the same now down here I want to make sure it's merged so click click and pierce so that gives me those points there I'm gonna look normal to it's, it's very important to put measurements whenever you're smart to mentioning always use the origin always 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 I cannot tell you how important that is when I smart to mention I usually round down or up the numbers you obviously don't have to I just think it's a little bit neater from presentation point of view. Now we have a lovely black sketch which we know is defined and I'm going to exit that sketch. When I come in here now I'm going to call that G-U-I-D-E C-U-R-V-E Guide Curve 1. Now I'm going to get a second guide curve so yet again front plane look normal to it, spline and I'm going to click and just draw my curve shape doesn't matter you're deciding what it's going to look like here now. Yet again I'm going to click this point click the line and I'm going to say pierce that's telling the computer exactly what we want it. Same for this fella. Click and click, pierce. And I'm going to look normal to it now and smart dimension again. So origin to the point each time, lads.
on that. Lovely, and that's gone black. I'm going to exit that sketch, and what I have here now is guide curve too. Now, the next thing I would like to do is I'd like to draw a guide curve going from this point to this point, but I have a slight problem. And the problem is I don't have a plane to draw it on, because as you can see, the right plane doesn't touch them. So here's what I'm going to do. Press escape, just so I ha don't have anything selected. I'm going to go features, reference geometry, and click plane. I'm going to click this point, this point, and this point. We need three points to make a plane. Now, as you can see, that'll give me my plane. I'm going to say yes. So I'm going to click on that F2. Construction, plane, B, and it's oblique, so I'm just going to say oblique, O, B. Lovely. Now, I'm going to look normal to this plane, and I'm going to sketch, first of all, a center line down the middle, because I'm going to try to have the same sketch on both sides. Spline, it's up to you what kind of a shape you want. Now, as you can see, both points have already gone black, so that means that they've been pierced. That's okay. Smart dimension. Very important that you smart dimension before you mirror the object. Lovely. I'm going to come up here now to mirror entities. I'm going to click my spline, mirror about my center line, and I'm going to say yes. Now, I'm going to exit that sketch. Now, if I look here, I'm just going to hide this fella because I'm finished with him at the moment. I've got two sketches here which are in the same plane. So, I'm going to click this. I'm going to call it construction. Construction guide curves. Now, they are construction guide curves, okay? Please watch what I'm going to do. I know they're on the oblique plane, so I'm going to click oblique plane, and I'm going to come up here to sketch, and I'm going to press sketch, which is up here, and that allows me to start a new sketch. I'm going to click the guide curve that I want, and I'm going to come up here to say convert entities. I'm going to then exit the sketch. Now, when I come here and click on this, that gives me two curves, but if I click here, I only have one curve, so I'm going to guide, G-U-I-D-E, C-U-R-V-E, tree, guide, curve, tree. So I'm taking the sketch part of it and bring them into a new sketch. I'm going to click on my oblique plane again, start a new sketch. This time I'm going to pick the one on the right, convert entities, exit my sketch, and this then is going to be guide curve 4. Now this is very important. This construction sketch can be 4, 3, and 4. So if I click on this, the computer automatically picks up the first sketch. So I need to right click and hide that. And now I should have four separate ones. Now I'm going to go into my surface, and I'm going to click on surface loft. Okay, surface loft. I'm going to click my bottom circle, and I'm going to click the square at the top. That's lovely. Now I'm going to click my guide curve. So one, two, three, and four. And that's giving me my shape. I'm just going to say yes to that, and I'm going to just call it F2, uh, bottle, surface, loft. So that's a bottle surface loft. Now, see all these construction things that are here? Do not delete them. They are part of this, and if you delete them, it can cause massive issues. Next I'm going to do is, I'm just going to fill the surface. So I'm going to click on this, these faces, and as you can hopefully see, that's after filling that surface now. Okay? I'm going to do the same thing again down here. As you can see, I have to click all of the lines. Um, if you have a very complex shape, that might I mean very small detail, that's okay. Now, I have this shape. I'm just going to go into section here. I'm just going to surface fill, top, and surface fill, bottom. It's very important that we rename so we know what we're talking about. If I section this here, you can see that the inside is still hollow like an Easter egg, and I want to make it um, solid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to this command, which is called knit surface. I'm going to click knit surface, and I'm going to click this top face, the middle face, and the bottom face. Now, try to form a solid and merge entities, please. Second of all, make sure this is not selected. We do not care about the gap control for the moment. Just say yes. And as you can see then, we have a solid surface. 
It is now solid, which is very important. You don't always need a solid surface, but for a lot of cases, it makes your job easier when you're doing different commands if it is um, solid. Rename. Now, next I would like to do is just change the details. So I'm going to come over here to this little icon that looks like a beach ball. Click on the beach ball. I'm going to plus the appearance. I'm going to plus the plastic. Click high gloss. And I'm just going to mess around a little bit. So I'm going to make the top face white. Just the face. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this face here red. A blue face. I'm, as you can see, I'm just making different colors green faces. Yellow face. And finally, oh sorry, I'm just going to turn it around. We'll put a black face on the bottom bit here. Click on the black. Now, very important. I'm just going to show you. If I face, that does the whole part. I just want the face. And that shows it to me. Now, you might say, yeah, that just puts a color on it. But there's another things we're going to do. If I click on this, you'll now see it's, um, what you call it, gets rid of the lines. But more importantly, if I come up here, and I type on render tools, and I'm going to type, not render tools, SolidWorks add-in, sorry. If I type in photo view 360, and I turn it on here, and say OK, and I'm just going to wait a moment, and this then is going to render for me to make it look like a new, a proper item. As you can see, because I picked the plastic, it's looking now like plastic. I'm going to click here, plain white background. I personally prefer the plain white background. I'm just going to turn it off for a second. I'm going to zoom in. Plain white, that's okay. I'm going to turn it on again. And there we can see, you'll see shadows and shapes and stuff, but they're just little things to mess with. And there's a surface loft. Everything is renamed. If I plus this, you'll see all of my different things renamed, so it's very obvious where everything is coming from.